something like that. So here we go, I have y equals two times cosecant of x plus pi over four. And what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to graph this problem. So the first thing we need to understand about the cosecant function is it's, that the re it's the reciprocal of the sine function. So when dealing with graphing the cosecant function, we need to graph the sine function, first of all, with our given transformations. Then I'm gonna kinda of show you some uh, quick little tri tricks to figure out how to get to the cosecant graph from the sine graph. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is kind of remember that this is the same thing as 1 over 2 sine of x plus pi over 4. All right. So I'm going to graph the sine function given this information. So the first thing, let's go ahead and find the amplitude, which in this case is the absolute value of a, which is 2. a is my 2, absolute value of 2 is 2. The period, remember, is 2 pi divided by b, which in this case is 1. So we have 2 pi. Let's just actually make it show a little work, right? Why not? Then let's go ahead and find the x scale, which is the same thing as our critical points that we actually want. don't want to find the critical points. I want to find the distance between each one of my critical points. So to do that, I'm going to take my period and divide that by 4, which is pi halves. And then the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and find my start and my end. Now, and that's the start and the end of my initial period, because I'm going to start off by graphing one initial period. Then I can repeat those periods in the positive and negative direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my function, or what I'm taking uh, inside my function, and I'm going to set that equal to 0. And I'm going to set inside my function, I'm going to set that equal to 2 pi. OK. So now, to go ahead and start, and, uh, start the end, I'm going to solve for x. So I'll have x equals negative pi over 4 and subtract, and I get x equals 7 pi over 4. OK, so I have, um, let's go ahead and graph this out. So I will set my x-axis, and I'm just going to have my start right in the middle. So my start is going to be at negative pi over 4. Then I'm going to have uh, four critical points, each being by a period of pi over 2. So that means my first critical point is going to be pi over 2 over, which would be pi over 4. Then I'll have 3 pi over 4. Then I'll have 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Therefore, you notice that my 0 or my y ac or when x equals 0, my y-axis is going to be between negative pi over 4 and pi, pi over 4. Then I'll just continue in the negative direction. OK. So now what I need to do is remember I'm dealing with the sine function. So the sine function, we, or before I actually go to this, I know my amplitude is going to go up to 2 and down to negative 2. So now I'm just going to graph my sine function. I'm going to graph it in blue because I'll show the cosecant function in, I'm sorry, I'm going to graph it in black. Then I'll show the cosecant function in blue. So the first thing, let's just graph what the sine function look like. I go to my first critical point, down to my next, down to the next one, back up. So now I, ah, I start here, right? No wonder that didn't look right. So we're going to start at negative pi over 4, right? That was our starting point. So there I go from my first critical point, next one, next one, next one. OK. I can also continue that in the negative direction. There we go. So that is two full periods of the sine function. But remember, we're trying to graph the cosecant function. So in graphing the cosecant function, one thing I notice is on the sine function, at each one of these x-intercepts, my function is equal to 0. So therefore, when graphing the cosecant function, these are now going to be asymptotes of my graph. So I'm going to graph a vertical line at every x-intercept. Now remember, your asymptotes are where your graph is going to approach, right? So that means my cosecant graph needs to approach each one of my, um, each one of my asymptotes. So how am I going to graph that? Well, when you look at a table, what you would notice is your cosecant and your sine graph are both going to have the same point at the max and the minimums. And then the end behavior of your cosecant graph is going to kind of look like a parabola approaching both of your um, asymptotes. So my graph is just going to continue in this direct, continue with this pattern at every max and min of the graph. So there you go. Oh, before I even get to that, so to graph it, sorry, let's erase now our aid of the sine function. So therefore, now we are just left with the cosecant graph. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you sign the cosecant function. Thanks.